Hi, I'm Matt here in Michigan. And I'm Randall here in Texas. Today, Matt and I are bringing you one of our absolute favorite movies of all time. 1981's Raiders of the Lost Ark. It is celebrating its 40th anniversary this year. It stars Harrison Ford, Karen Allen, Paul Freeman, and John Rice davies It's directed by Steven Spielberg, who, you know, you might have heard of some of his films. Jaws, 1941, Jurassic Park, Minority Report, just to name a few. We also have it based on a story by George Lucas, Star Wars, American Graffiti. If you are commonly a viewer of our channel, you probably have heard about George Lucas by now. It has a screenplay by Lawrence Kasdan, who, if you are a big Star Wars fan, you know, also wrote the screenplay for Episode 5 and Episode 6 and Episode 7 in the Star Wars franchise. The music in this is composed by none other than John Williams, super famous for working with George Lucas and Steven Spielberg. So you'll hear his music in Jurassic Park, obviously the Indiana Jones series, Star Wars, and other mainstream films like the Harry Potter series. Before we go any further, if you like this kind of video and you like this video, make sure to give it a like, subscribe to the channel, and ring the bell icon if you always want to know when we're uploading new videos. Now, Raiders of the Lost Ark takes place in the 1930s. An American archaeologist is trying to find the Ark of the Covenant before the Nazis can get their hands on it. It had a $20 million budget and earned nearly $390 million worldwide at the box office. When adjusted for inflation, it's a budget of about $57 million and more than $1 billion, that's billion with a B, dollars in box office revenue. Randall? What is that? <gasps> Marvel money. Marvel <laughs> money. It is the highest grossing film of 1981, and it played in theaters for more than a year. It's praised by both critics and audiences, with many considering it to be one of the best movies ever made. Raiders of the Lost Ark won five Academy Awards and was selected for preservation in the National Film Registry. The Indiana Jones series also contains three other films, a television series, there's also books, video games, and much, much more. Randall, Indiana Jones is iconic. This is the first Indiana Jones movie. Raiders of the Lost Ark, now looking back 40 years for its 40th anniversary, what do you think? What stands out to me so much, especially when I watch this movie for a review instead of just sitting down to watch it and enjoy it, is just how much of this film is done correctly, at least as I perceive correctly to be. Um, you get to see characters do things instead of being told they do things. And that's one of the chief complaints I have about lots of other movies is so much exposition. You get to see Indiana Jones the very first time you see him he's doing stuff. You get to see the bad guys be bad. The bad guys in this film are doing things. You get to see our you know, heroine in this film, Karen Allen's character, immediately showing what she does. It, it's a textbook good movie. Good movie making, good directing, good filmmaking, good scripting. Indy is iconic character in... That reveal of Indy, like you're talking about, so iconic too. You just kind of see him doing kind of like little, like, I would say, semi like dangerous things without even seeing his face. And when we finally get that reveal with his, you know, the whip to knock the gun out of the one guy's hand, and you see that Harrison Ford face, and you know exactly, hey, this is, this is someone not to mess with. <laughs> one of the other things it does amazingly well is. You have to remember, it's an action-adventure movie, first and foremost. But unlike some modern movies who spend a lot of time in exposition or, or not enough time out in the field showing you things, they're just telling you all the stuff, all the plot devices, this is an action-adventure film where action and adventure is the rule, not the exception. They spend the time doing the things that need to be done, not just talking about doing these things. Yes, indeed. The action and stuff in this is great. Each action set 
you know, tells like a little bit of story of our characters, the people involved and everything. Like I said, always love doing more than telling. The only little bit of maybe exposition or whatever we get in this film is when they're trying to describe what the arc is and why the arc is important and why the Nazis might want to get their hands on it. But everything else is told through the actions of our characters and stuff in this one. And I can't tell say enough about, you know, the iconic, you know, Indiana Jones. And for me, when you're talking about like seeing different people or whatever as characters and stuff, Harrison Ford was like the first actor who I actually knew his name. Watching like Star Wars, like I never knew like Mark Hamill as Luke Skywalker. It was always Luke Skywalker, you know, Carrie Fisher as Princess Leia. It was always Princess Leia. It wasn't really Carrie Fisher, but Harrison Ford with playing both Indiana Jones and playing Han Solo, another iconic character. It's kind of like, he. this is the first actor whose name I actually knew. Yeah, and even though you take that and you're like, hey, I now recognize this Harrison Ford character as a real-life person, you know, it doesn't change the fact that when you see him on screen as Indy, my God, he is Indiana Jones, or he is Han Solo. Or he is, insert character here, you know, from like The Fugitive or whatever, any other films. He does a great job of embodying those characters. Um, you know, when he's playing Jack Ryan, you're just like, oh, you know, he's not just Indiana Jones in another film, you know. No, he's playing Jack Ryan. So Harrison Ford does a fantastic job in that. And you you remember that he was not even the first pick for Indiana Jones. Tom Selleck was. What a difference that would have made. Wow, what a difference that would have made. And that's not trying to be mean or or disingenuous to Tom Selleck. That's just saying that Indiana Jones has become synonymous with Harrison Ford. Not only him, like the character, you know, being iconic, but like some of these scenes that we have are just so great. Like one of my favorite scenes is kind of like an action, you know, kind of like chase scene. So when Indiana Jones is getting on the truck to try to steal the Ark back, from Balak and stuff, and you just see, like, how vulnerable a bit of a character Indy is. You know, he gets shot in the shoulder, you know, he's getting punched, different things, and then for him to, like, go out through the, the front of the truck or whatever and, like, holding on to the uh, the front of the truck and everything, how this whole scene plays out, for me, is just one of my favorite scenes in all movies. And it's so much fun because not only is it an intense scene to watch, that particular scene where all the uh, the trucks, basically, the grill is just falling apart, it's funny. It's kind of entertaining funny as well, not just, oh my god, our, our protagonist is in, in peril, but he's also just making a fun movie to watch. He's the protagonist. You know that he's probably going to be okay. But um, we had already mentioned John Williams in that particular scene. The score is really right there, egging along everything that's happening. And you're just like, oh, man, I'm I'm so into this. I love John Williams score in this movie. His the way he does with certain scenes, it just adds to all those scenes. So much excitement and stuff, even though, you know, you kind of get little hints or whatever from like other movies and stuff that he makes. John Williams just, you know, John Williams sound when you hear it. Yeah, man, I, I tell you, I was sitting there thinking to myself, hmm, and now I'm going to hear the, the Leia and Han love? Wait, no, no. Because, you know, Empire Strikes Back came out the year before this, and it's probably no coincidence that the love theme for, you know, Marion and uh, Indy is kind of similar to Han and Leia's love theme. They're very close. Yeah, I noticed the exact same thing too when I was watching when you know near at the end where they're kind of after talking with like the FBI agent or Indy was about what they're doing with the Ark, and they're the two of them are like walking down the step, you know, Indy and Miriam and stuff. It's like I was thinking that same thing too. Like, oh my goodness, is this like the Han and and the Leia theme? Where I'm like, oh no, it's not. It's Indy and Miriam. So moving on from, you know, the obvious amazing portrayal of Indiana Jones, there are other characters in this film and oh oh something's breaking down outside my door. Um one of my definite favorite portrayals outside of of Harrison's portrayal of Indy is John Rice Davies' portrayal of Sala. Because besides the fact that Sala's character is just so solidly portrayed and I love him as a character. It does a lot to even elevate Indiana Jones's character. It shows Indy as this globe-trotting individual who isn't just 
there to be an archaeologist. He's making friends. He's making connections. He's he's well liked where he goes. Unlike Belloc, who several times it's it's told like, "Too bad the Hovidos don't know you the way I do, Belloc." Or the fact that like you immediately sell, see Belloc stealing from Indy at the beginning. Indy's character is elevated by the fact that he knows these other characters all around the globe, and they like him. <laughs> Oh yeah, Indy definitely needs these friends too. I mean, a lot of times Indy's just getting by by the skin of his teeth in a lot of these situations. Like, Indy can normally handle the situations, but it's not like he's like, you know, I'm just going to handle everything great. He needs help. There's one scene in particular where Indy's about to eat that date. <laughs> if Davy's character wasn't observant and stuff, he'd really go, you know, would be dead kind of thing. Another thing that's kind of interesting too when you're talking about Belloc you know, they the two of them try to, like, compare themselves. You kind of show, like, Belloc's character shows you what Indy is not kind of thing. And everything that Belloc lacks shows you how, you know, Indy's character is so much more. And I think that's what a, a great thing to kind of show. Like you said, Indy's got these friends. People like Indy. And yet Belloc, he's, you know, basically, you know, paying for people to help him out on to get, you know, the same things. What about your master, De Fuhrer? <laughs> <laughs> you have these characters who all show these traits early on in the film, where Indy's shown as an adventurer doing his thing, and Marion is shown, you know, getting into this drinking competition and acting, playing it up, trying to raise the stakes just a little bit to, to make it seem like she's doing worse than she is. And then Belloc, you immediately see him doing bad things because bad guys need to do bad things in movies. I, I swear, modern movies have forgotten that. And I say, Zangief, you are bad guy. But this does not mean you're bad guy. But all of those traits and all those things, they come back later. You see Belloc again later steal the Ark from Indy. You see Marion once again trying her drinking trick on Belloc. You see a lot of that stuff going on, only for it to come back again. Yeah, it's great. It's great writing that we actually get these things with these characters. It's not just like a one-off where it's kind of like, hey, yeah, we, we see something like this and it doesn't come back. It's great that we do that you know, full circle and that they stay true to themselves throughout the film. It's really great. I really like seeing that. And it just goes on to like we were saying before. It's all this, you know, showing us and not telling us. Yes. Now, Matt, we got to discuss one of your favorite scenes in the film. I need I need to ask you, what do you think my favorite scene in the film is? Oh, man. What, what, is, it, is it one particular scene in the film? Mm, <laughs> not exactly. Could, could it be any time Indy punches a Nazi? <laughs> it's every time Indy punches a Nazi. <laughs> All right, it's, it's fair to say that obviously the Nazis make up a large bulk of bad guys in movies. And and this film is, if, if I give it some credit to what it's doing with the Nazis, it's, it's playing on our ideals of the Nazis with 2020 Heinvision. It's 1981. We know all of the extremely terrible things that the Nazis did. But... As characters in 1937, not to say the Nazis hadn't done bad things yet because they were already instigating some very bad policies, the characters themselves wouldn't have necessarily have thought of Nazis as as just bad guys, as just evil necessarily, like they're portrayed in the movie with the knowledge of the filmmakers knowing what happened 40 years previous. Oh my god. This movie... Is 40 years old now. It was just as far removed from the America entering World War One, or sorry, two World War Two, at the time that we're now reviewing it. Isn't that amazing? Wow! <laughs> Mine blown. <laughs> I I really think that you know, even though having them be Nazis adds a little bit to it. I think because these villains are so well put together. Or, you know, are bad guys doing bad things? I think they could be something else. You don't necessarily have to be Nazis. Yeah, when you have a really good, compelling bad guy who does bad things and you see them do bad things and you know they're the villain, that is always going to make for a very good villain. It just adds a little bit something extra when they're Nazis. 
<laughs> but you know, we we have um probably this more famous scene besides the face melting scene which we will get to. <laughs> where you have uh the the big large gruff Nazi where him and, and Indy are getting into a fight with each other and it's so obvious that Indy is outmatched. In, in other films, I've definitely criticized especially the Terminator franchise when an obviously superior force gets their hands on the protagonist and you're just like okay well now he could just crunch his neck or something and that's it that's the end of it instead they throw him across the room in this it's clear that that much physically superior nazi is just messing with indy he's like i can beat him anytime i want but i'm choosing to just have fun with it i think it's a little bit of a respect or whatever between the two adversaries the Nazi knows that Indy is pretty capable, but at the same time, too, he knows he has the upper hand and can beat him and stuff, too. And I love just how much it shows kind of like Indy's character. Indy's character realizes, too, that, hey, I'm not really going to be able to just outpunch this guy or whatever. I'm going to need to get the upper hand or something. And right at the beginning, he's trying to distract him before he gets that first punch in kind of thing. And it's great. That really just goes that. That's another thing like I was talking about. The action in this movie tells us a lot about the characters. It's not just like, hey, I'm just this great you know, character and I'm just fighting just because fighting looks cool and stuff. Like the actions that happen during the fight tell us about the characters and it adds to the characters. Especially too with the one at the beginning where, you know, Indy, you know, just takes out the gun and shoots the guy with like the sword or whatever. And that shows how these are like two, you know, contrasting like scenes. Like this one's more like, you know, with the Nazi fight is more longer played out to show. But at the same time too, we could also go to a short scene where Indy just pulls out the gun. And that is a whole lot telling of the character too. So I'm glad it's not just a one trick pony kind of thing where we see like the same kind of fight scene played out over and over again we have variety in there in this movie even though the scene earlier that you're referencing where he just shoots him is very well known as a not planned out scene <laughs> it, it was it's very famous that harrison ford was just sick as a dog that day and couldn't do the fight scene and then he just shoots the guy instead <laughs> you're you're just like it doesn't matter because the end result is that that is a way better like character building moment than just another fist fight scene. And then when he's getting into this fight with the larger, you know, physically superior uh, being, they make a point of showing again, just good filmmaking, good direction that he doesn't have his gun. His gun has, you know, gotten away from him. So he kind of has to fight at that point. Can you imagine if they went back and redid that scene as it was originally intended instead of, you know, what we got? Man, it would completely change Indy. <laughs> 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 and it just goes to show you because Indy is such an iconic character. It's these scenes and even though maybe not intentional, they are what create the character that we know and stuff today. Thank God after the... <laughs> E.T. director's cut. Steven Spielberg's like, yeah, no, I'm not doing that anymore, bro. <laughs> <laughs> One other thing we were talking about earlier, we kind of alluded to that we'd get to is is the face mountain scene. Randall and I, we like talking about special effects. And this is one, too, where at the time we get near the end, we get kind of like the ghosts that kind of flow over by the arc. And then we have the face melting scene. And at the time, that was such a big effect. Like, all the other special effects companies that didn't work on this film were asking the people, like, hey, how did you do that? How did you pull off that visual? Now, it may date the movie a little bit now, but I think it still works great with this film. Yeah, you know, the fun thing is, when I was watching through it this time, and in high definition, watching it for a review, not just watching to enjoy it again, like I said at the beginning, I do start to notice, like, some of the sets, the set pieces are so very clearly sets, you know, like sound stage sets. But when they do do some location shooting, when they're in the desert areas and when they're in the the mountainous regions on the island, you really start to see that the vast majority of this film holds up visually very well. It's so character driven. You spend so much time on the characters, with the characters, on location. But yeah, the sets... The special effects are aging a little bit, but I wouldn't have it any other way. You know, this is the way it was intended to be seen. 
there they talk about like practical effects as opposed to digital effects. I don't know that if we made this movie today that we would have all those snakes in the snake pit. Those would probably be like a a digital effect. But now we have actually have all these snakes. Talk about another iconic scene. There's so many iconic scenes in this movie. And, you know, it's a longer movie by some standards, you know, over two hours long. But, you know, almost every scene that we go to is a memorable one scene that we go in. That's just another one to, to bring that on. Which, honestly, is just a great segue into another thing. This film is so quotable. And a lot of our films from, you know, that we look back on so nostalgically, we look back on and we can quote them. And it's not just because we've seen them a lot. We can quote them because they're something memorable to quote. Snakes. Why did it have to be snakes? I say, and I'll probably say it even more the older I get, you know, constantly, you know, it's not the years, it's the mileage. You know, that's from Raiders, yeah, The Lost Ark. Yeah, great quote. And that's the thing, too. This is such a fun movie to watch. That kind of adds to it. When you have some of these, like, quotable things, it just makes it, you know, more enjoyable and stuff to watch. And it, it brings you back in, in your head and stuff. And like you said, it's not just one of those It's like, hey, we've watched this so many times so that we can, like, quote the movie. It's different elements in there is just, you know, quotable for it or whatever it because even though you know they're not just put in there just like quote like they add something actually to the scene and to it so yes everyone that worked on this movie you know from like writing the storytelling directing the acting and stuff special effects you know the sets and everything the music everyone came real together brought their a game when it comes to this movie 100 percent. if you haven't seen raiders of the lost ark You've got to see Raiders of the Lost Ark. Yeah, it's 40 years old, so some people that are watching this might not have ever seen it, but please go watch it. It's so well done. It is almost textbook well done with some of the most brilliant minds of the day who are still making movies today, putting their best foot forward. It is a lot of fun. I absolutely love this movie. I love Indiana Jones. It's one of my favorite characters Heck, my favorite movie, this isn't even my favorite movie in the series. I love, you know, The Last Crusade the most. But Raiders is still great. If you haven't seen Raiders of the Lost Ark, I highly recommend you go check it out. Randall and I have a whole bunch of other reviews, new reviews, flashback reviews. Randall and I also have bigger discussions and deeper dives. So be sure to go to our YouTube page to check that out. We put new videos out every Monday and Thursday. Be sure to check those out. We have a Facebook page where we will always post a day before our videos come out to let you know what the next topic is going to be. For now, I'm Matt here in Michigan. Have a good day. And I'm Randall here in Texas. I will see everybody next time. Next time on No Market Media. Please consider checking out some of our other videos. 